Church, why don't you stand to your feet? Happy Easter. Praise God. This is our second service at a full house this morning. Several got the Holy Ghost. Seven people were baptized this morning in the name of Jesus, the gospel. Praise God. God is good. What a wonderful Easter we've had already. About 2,000 years ago, a group of women were coming to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus where he'd been buried. When they got there, there was an angel there and said, Fear not, I know who you're looking for, Jesus of Nazareth. The good news, the best news that has ever been preached is that he is not here. He has risen, and that's what every Easter is about. We celebrate the risen Lord. Why don't you just lift your voice, lift your hands. Let's just celebrate the King of Kings and the empty tomb and the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. 
so good, and that is our King. As you guys return back to your seats, we want to welcome everybody that's here today. Thank you so much for being in our second Easter service this morning. We had a wonderful first service at 9 o'clock this morning. We have multiple services planned for the rest of the afternoon all over the city, plus the Spanish service here at 2 o'clock. But for now, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for those of you joining us online. And give a hand clap to all our guests that are here. Thank you for being here. God is going to move greatly. If you could turn your attention to the screen for a short video. Easter, it means so many different things to people all over the world. But if you condense the meaning of Easter down to one simple truth, you'll always end up with three words. Over and over and over again, three words. He is risen. Jesus of Nazareth is God in the flesh, full of grace, full of truth. He lives a perfect life in a broken world. He's crucified, dead, and buried. But the grave cannot possibly contain him. He is risen. Risen is the conquering and victorious king over sin and death. Risen to invite all people back into the abundant life their souls have been longing for all along. Fast forward 2,000 years. Those three words that have literally changed history now have the power to change us. For those who are lonely and full of doubt, he is risen. For those with songs of praise and for those with cries of lament, he is risen. For the seeking, the broken, the anxious, the depressed, the successful, the young and the old, it's the presence of the risen Jesus that we encounter as the only one who can possibly carry us through it all. And God's priceless gift of salvation resurrects our own lifeless hearts and offers hope to a world that's dying for the same rebirth. All because in the fullness of time, God wrapped himself in human flesh, stepped out of eternity, and chose a tomb outside of Jerusalem to communicate one simple and abiding truth. He is risen. And those three words have the power and the glory to change every waking moment. Oh, if you believe it, let's all stand and clap our hands to him. It's good to be in God's house today. Praise the Lord. Come on, everybody. Let's clap our hands. Let's worship him. Make a joyful noise. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Luke 24 and 2, some of the most important words ever written. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, from the grave. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today we celebrate the life the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a great day. It is a great day to be in God's house. One more time, let's clap our hands to him and thank him for what this day stands for. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It is that time of giving in our service. On this day that God has given us so much, we need to be in remembrance. We need, we need to be remembering everything he's giving us and remember our giving to the Lord. Amen. Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. On this day of giving, we're going to give unto him, worshiping him. We're going to come down in just a moment. The musicians are going to play and you can give right in front of me. Again, the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Praise the Lord. We, a quick reminder, we have multiple ways to give today online, on our app, text to give, and again, in the baskets right here in front of us. It's, it feels good in God's house today, amen. If you came here looking for something, you came to the right place. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done here today. But Lord, we have an expectation in our spirit. We can't wait to see what you're gonna do today. Lord, we give you praise and honor. We thank you, God, for everything you've given us. God, bless your people as they give. Bless this offering, and we pray all of this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said amen. Praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord as we give.
beautiful song, so fitting for this day. Whether you know it or not, you're a winner because of him. He's the one that made us win. He's the one that causes us to win. We get in a lot of situations as human beings. Some we bring on ourselves, some are brought on us by other people. But it really doesn't matter. The bottom line is we're going to win because of him in our life. Can you say amen? amen? Praise God. Anybody here love him today? Are you rejoicing in Easter Sunday and all that it means? We had a great first service this morning, just a little less than we got here in this service, a few less, but still a really great crowd in that first service. There's no way we could have put both of you in the same building, both services in the same building. And this morning, seven got baptized and three filled with the Holy Ghost, refilled and filled. Thank the Lord. We're so thankful for that. Brother Clarence, I think he's probably on his way to Franklin for their service. By the way, we've got services literally all over the state of Virginia, all over Tidewater and uh, all day long. I think we've got about a dozen, is that right? At least a dozen services today. And uh, there'll be all kind of people that'll be hearing the gospel before this day's over. And I'm so thankful for that. Can you say amen? But Brother Clarence, who is starting, helping us start a new church in Franklin, Virginia, was out yesterday witnessing to folks and inviting folks to come to their service today in Franklin. And they prayed a woman through to the Holy Ghost right on the street Amen. yesterday. That's the beauty of this free gift, folks, is you can have it anytime you ask for it. And you can get it anywhere you are. Praise God. Amen. I'm so thankful for what God's doing. Thankful for all of you that are here with us today. Thankful for all of those that will join us online. Uh, I think you just turned me down or off or something. The, all of those that will join us online today, we're so thankful for that. It is good, good, good to know that God is working among us in such a powerful way. <laughs> Brother James told me that we're averaging around 45 or 50,000 people a month that are watching our services we have a lot of people that watch that don't subscribe to our channels uh, but then we have a lot that do subscribe and he just told me this week we are growing by over 1,000 new subscribers per month adding a thousand per month new subscribers to our services we want to welcome all of them. Would you clap your hands for everybody that's watching wherever they are in the world today? The Bible says, No greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Let me read it again. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. It's what Easter's all about. It's why we're here. It's why we have this day of celebration. We are literally celebrating the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to preach to you today that there is no greater love. There is no greater love than that he died, was buried, and rose again. The scripture would have us to know it's not for sins that he committed. He that knew no sin became sin for me and for you. He took upon himself the sins of the world, the scripture says, for me and for you. Somebody say amen. amen. And we are so thankful today that he loved us enough to endure the death, burial, and resurrection. He made it possible for you and I to be standing here today in his presence 
to enjoy the blessings and the goodness of God? Are you glad for what God has done for you? God bless you. You may be seated. My subject is no greater love. In the book of Romans chapter 6, verses 2 through 5, it says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 3, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Verse 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. The love of God is not seen anywhere more clearly than in the cross and the crucifixion. That is the greatest show of love that you have ever seen or that you ever will see. That one that knew no sin, one that had done no wrong, one that had committed no evil, one that no fault could be found in him would say, give me the sins of the world. Not just the sins of those that were alive at the day he was living in, but give me the sins of every human being that will ever be created. Give me the sins of everybody that will be gathered at 600 Happy Acres Road on March the 31st, 2024. Give me all their sins and I'm going to die for that sin. I'm going to be buried for that sin and I'm going to rise again so that they can have victory over sin. He that knew no sin became sin for all of us. No matter what your sin is, no matter how wrong you are or have been, no matter the mistakes that you've made, no matter how you feel about yourself, no matter what you're thinking, you cannot know anything about how God thinks if you're trying to make God a man and make him think like a man. His ways are so far above our ways. His love is so high, much higher than our love. His, his ability to show mercy is so much greater than our ability to show mercy. We human beings are in fact not really very merciful to each other. But I've come to tell you today that there is one that no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you're from, no greater love hath any man than he that would lay down his life for another. Is there anybody here today glad that God forgives sin? Is there anybody here today that's glad that God washes away sin? Is there anybody here today glad that God can fill you with a spirit that will give you power to live above sin? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. So that love of God is not seen anywhere more clearly than at the cross and the crucifixion. I've read to you two portions of scripture that tells us that it was Jesus' death, number one. Jesus' burial, number two. And Jesus' resurrection, number three. That gives us the opportunity, that gives us the privilege of coming to him as we are. Of saying, God, I'm sorry. Of taking his name in baptism and being filled with his spirit and living a victorious life. It's because of his death and his burial and his resurrection. Honey, it's as easy as one, two, three. It's as easy as ABC, death, burial, resurrection. The Bible would have you and I to know that Jesus' death is our repentance. Hello? 
We die out to sin at repentance. The word repent literally means to turn around. I've been walking this direction in sin. And when I say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all my sin. God, I don't want to live that way anymore. I don't want to act that way anymore. I don't want to talk that way anymore. I don't want to be bound by those habits anymore. That's called repentance. Repentance is simply turning your back on the old life, turning your back on sin, and purposing in your mind, I'm going to live for Him. I'm going to let him lead my life. He paid such a price for me. I'm happy to turn it over to him. And then it tells us that his burial mirrors our water baptism. His death is our death, our death to sin, our dying out to sin. But his burial is our water baptism. In the book of Romans chapter 6, it says we are buried with him in baptism. But like him, we're going to rise to walk in the newness of life. You go down a dry center and you come up a wet child of God. Your life is transformed at the waters of baptism. We had seven this morning that said, you know what? This, this is the greatest day in the world that I could ever be baptized on is Easter Sunday because it's all about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And so today I'm going to repent. I'm going to be baptized. I'm going to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Say amen. Clap your hands while you're doing it. And Jesus' re resurrection mirrors our Holy Spirit baptism. When we come up out of that water, we are a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. We are, in fact, resurrected from the dead. Hello? We rise to walk in the newness of life. We become a brand new creature. We're not the man we used to be. We're not the person we used to be. Because in the waters of baptism, there's a transformation takes place. We go down in that name that's above every other name. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's the name we're baptized in. Let's clap your hands and shout yes. I would present to you today that the love of God is easiest seen in his death, burial, and resurrection. God loved us so much that God took upon himself a body of flesh. It was in that video that you just watched that God became flesh and dwelt among us and went to an old rugged cross. Again, not for sins that he had done, not for wrongs that he had committed. He did it for me. He did it for you. Look at your neighbor right square in the eye and say, he did it for you. That's why he went to the cross. It was for you. It was for me. It was for whosoever will. Oh, we ought to be excited about that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 1 says, I declare unto you the gospel. Everybody say the gospel. Paul said, which I preached unto you, by which also ye are saved. Everybody said saved. saved. Say saved. By the gospel. What is the gospel? It's the death, burial, and resurrection. We are saved by the gospel. Paul went on to say in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, he said, Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again. Again, it's as simple as 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. He, was, he died, he was buried, he rose again. We repent, we are baptized, we're filled with the Holy Ghost. It is as easy as 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. Clap your hands and say yes. Aren't you glad God made a plan for us? Aren't you glad God made a way for us? Aren't you glad we don't have to die in our sin? Aren't you glad we don't have to go to hell? Oh, no, you don't have to go to hell. Clap your hands and shout yes. In Romans 1 and 16, he makes it very clear. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is 
Look at the screen. For it is the power of God unto what? What? Let me hear you. Unto what? It, the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel, I'm going to say it again, the death, the burial, the resurrection, repentance, water baptism, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. He made it so easy a child could do it. A, B, C, one, two, three. It's that easy. But it is the gospel unto salvation. Whew. Oh, I love this book, don't you? The gospel, his death, burial, and resurrection, our repentance, water baptism, and Holy Spirit baptism is in fact God's plan of salvation. Is there anybody in here happy that God give us a plan of salvation? Do you know what a miserable world this would be if all God did was point out that you lost but didn't tell you how to be saved? Wouldn't it be a, a horrible world if all we could do is realize how wrong we are and don't know how to make it right? But I'm telling you, through his own death, that's what we're celebrating on Easter. I don't care if some atheist is out there picking up Easter eggs. They don't know it, but they're celebrating his death, burial, and resurrection. I don't care what the White House said about today. They don't know it, but they're celebrating his death, burial, and resurrection. That's what this day celebrates. Clap your hands and shout yes. The gospel, his death, burial, and resurrection, it is our salvation. And I've come to tell you today, there is no greater love. There is no greater love than God made a way of escape for you and for me, for anybody, all mankind. Preacher, you don't know what I've done. It don't matter what you've done. Hello? Preacher, you don't know how many times I've failed God. It don't matter how many times you fail God. The only thing that matters is how many times do you come back. There's an Old Testament scripture that says that a man falls seven times. The word seven or the number seven in the Old Testament especially represents fullness. Completeness. They say it's God's number because it represents fullness or completeness. Hear me when I tell you when it said a man falls seven times, it's saying a man completely falls. A man completely messes up. A man just makes a royal mess out of his life. He makes a royal mess out of everything. But that's not the end of the scripture that a man falls seven times. It also goes on to say, but he gets up again if he's a wise man. If he's a wise man, you're always going to get up one more time than you fell down. If you're listening to the devil and the devil's telling you you can't get up, if the devil's telling you you can't change, if the devil's telling you you can't walk in victory, you can't be happy, the devil is a liar and the father of all lies. God said nothing can separate you from his love. That's what today is all about. That is the death, burial, and resurrection. Clap your hands and shout yes. You may be seated. I'm going to ask you again. Are you thankful for salvation? How many of you would live for God if the whole Bible could be reduced to one subject? The death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel. If there was nothing else in the Bible but the gospel, how many of you would think that's enough and I'll still live for God? Wave your hand at me. Sure, I would. I want to know how to be saved. I want to know what God requires for me to lay all this mess down behind me and go on and be in a happy relationship with Him. I want to know how to please Him. I want to know how to be in communion with Him. Come on, somebody. If all He did was save us, that'd be enough. If all He did was save us, that'd be great. That'd be wonderful. 
But I'm going to tell you today, he didn't stop there. He said, I want to add some things to their salvation. I want to give them some things beyond salvation. I want to do some things for them beyond what is required, the death, burial, and resurrection. I want to go a little further. I want to be a good father to them. I want to be kind to them. I want to be loving to them. I want to bless them. I want to give them favor. If Jesus' death on the cross cross purchased nothing more than salvation, to this old boy that'd be enough. But that isn't how he thinks. In Hebrews chapter 6 and 9, the Apostle Paul talks about things that accompany salvation. What do you mean by accompany? It means I'm not going to stop at salvation. I'm going to save you. But that ain't where I'm going to let you be on your own after I've saved you. I'm going to give you some things that accompany salvation. I'm fixing to preach to you here, folks. I'm fixing to tell you that when, you are, when you've repented of your sins, been baptized in his name, been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, it's like walking through one of these doors. You've just stepped through the door, but in front of you is a humongous room and building to enjoy and take advantage of. When you've repented, been baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost, it's like you just walked into the door, and now you're looking at the vastness of your door great God, the vastness of his presence, the vastness of his ability, the vastness of his love. You don't even know where to begin. It's so great once you walk in. He said, I'm going to give you things that accompany salvation. I'm not just going to save you. I'm going to save you plus. (laughs) Clap your hands and say, thank the Lord. In Psalm 103, verses 2 through 4, King David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. I've carried an American Express card for years. Let me see what it says here. Tells you on it how long. A member since 1988. And every month since 1988. Here's one of the benefits. I get a bill from them. (laughs) And with American Express, you got to pay the whole balance. Can't send them a payment. Got to pay the whole balance. Now that's cool. Because in my mind, I keep record of what I've spent. My wife don't tell me what she spent. The truth of the matter is, on every bill it says, the card with membership benefits. Now, my wife ought to be hollering amen because she's getting the benefits of it. I'm paying the bill. There's a lot of things the world calls a benefit. Ain't really a benefit. Hello? They don't just make me pay back. They make me pay back with interest. If I don't pay back, they penalize me. Not much benefit in that, is there? That's the world's concept of a benefit. But David said, forget not his benefits. And he goes on and tells us, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. You that are having a little bit of problem forgiving yourself, get over it, will you? Get over it. You're living beneath your privilege. You're living beneath the love of God. You're living beneath the goodness of God. Get over it. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness? Who crowneth thee with tender mercies? Forget not all these benefits. Say, oh preacher, it'd be enough if when I repented, he said, you're forgiven. If when I was baptized, he washed away my sins. And when I asked him for the Holy Ghost, he filled me. He said, that's good. I'm going to give you all of that. That's what this day purchased. But he said, I want you to know, I'm going to throw some benefits in with it. I'm going to give some things that accompany salvation. Are y'all with me? 
I'm telling you, we serve a great, big, wonderful God. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. This year when I went to Thailand, I love Thailand, I love the Thai people, but 97% of their population are Buddhist. 97% will go see a Buddhist, a, a, an idol of Buddha, a depiction of Buddha. Don't look like him at all, but it's their depiction of Buddha. One of the reasons I could do real good in Thailand is Buddha's a great big fat guy. So the Thai people like fat people. It's the reason I do good over there. Hello? They don't even tell fat jokes in Thailand because of Buddha. What you all so quiet about? <laughs> Skinny people are afraid to say anything. The fat people's upset. I go to Thailand and they get down in front of those idols. There's one particular idol that you got to go up a set of stairs to get to it. It sets on top. It's three or four stories tall. It's overlaid with solid gold. And literally thousands of people a day come there. And if you're a real, real, real devout Buddhist, on the bottom step of that hundred some steps that goes up to it, you get down on your knees. And on your knees, you crawl up those hundred steps. When you get to the top, you crawl on your knees across the courtyard. And when you get inside of that overhang that's over top of that Buddha, you crawl in there and you reach up his big toe where they got him sitting with his legs crossed. And his big toe that's the easiest thing to reach from the ground, it's literally flat on the end. The other foot, the toes are round, but on this foot, it's flat. It's the easiest thing to reach, and so many people have come there and rub on that big toe over the decades, over the years, that they've now rubbed it down flat. And there's thousands of them that goes in there. They cry. They crawl on their knees. They make their way to that statue. It's a statue that cannot hear. It's got ears, but it can't hear. It's got eyes, but it can't see. It's got arms, but it can't touch. Come on, somebody. You are in the presence of a living God today. He didn't just save you. He give you things that accompany salvation. He give you benefits. Clap your hands and shout yes. What kind of benefits you talking about, preacher? Ephesians 1 and 7 said, Through Jesus' blood we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. It's not talking about the forgiveness you have the first time you repent. I want you to know that every day you mess up, you can repent again. The Apostle Paul that wrote 14 books of your New Testament, he wrote to us everything we know about the church and church structure, about the gifts of the Spirit, about love, about the fruit of the Spirit. And that man said, I die daily. Every day I repent. Every day I go back to Him and say, God, I'm sorry for any sin I've committed, any wrong that I've done. I want you to know that one of the benefits are it's not just that you got forgiven when you first repented. You're going to get forgiven every day that you're man enough or woman enough to go back to Him and say, hey, God, shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have acted that way, shouldn't have responded that way. I shouldn't feel this way. I shouldn't think this way. I shouldn't read that, listen to that, or watch that. Hello? Things that accompany salvation. Wouldn't it be horrible? You've all said if he did that for you, death, burial, resurrection, repentance, baptism, Holy Ghost. I said it. You said it. If he did that and nothing else, it would be great. It really wouldn't be. Because what if God said, you repent, but you don't never get a chance to fix it if you do it wrong, if you mess up. You can be baptized, but it's not once and for all. It's a one-time deal and you ever mess it up, you can't go back and redo it. I'll give you the Holy Ghost, but you ever let the oil leak out, I'm not going to refill you. Hello? Then that wouldn't be so great. It wouldn't be enough. 
Aren't you glad that when he gave you repentance, when he washed away your sins, when he filled you with the gift of the Holy Ghost, aren't you glad that he went ahead and made a way? He added a little something to it. He stuck a blessing on the back of it. He said, look, if you mess up, just come on back. If you do wrong, come on back. No matter what you do, come on back. You need to understand he allowed his body to be broken, his back to be beaten. He allowed a crown of thorns to be stuffed on his head. He allowed a spear to be thrust in his side. When he call, could have called down 10,000, the Bible said legions of angels to save himself. He refused to do it. He stood there. He laid there. He suffered everything that this day stands for for one reason. He knew you would be in the house of God today and in need of Him. <laughs> Clap your hands and shout yes. The Bible said He healeth all of our diseases. There's lots of diseases in 2024. It used to be when a preacher said He heals your diseases, we was talking about sickness. Now we've got folks that are dealing with very, very, very real physical situations, emotional situations, relational situations in their marriage and home, spiritual situations, financial situations. I'm glad he said, I'll heal all. <laughs> Whatever it is. Somebody told me the other day, talking about someone that's really struggling emotionally. And I was about, maybe it was staff meeting, Tuesday or Wednesday, someone brought this up of someone that really needed our prayer. And I, whoever I was with, I told them. I said, let me explain to you my philosophy of this. Nobody ever dies of a heart condition and we ask whether or not they made heaven. Hello? Nobody ever has kidney failure and we ask whether or not they're saved. Or did they make heaven if they die? People can have bladder failure, liver failure, all these organs. And nobody ever says, boy, I wonder if he was ready to meet God. You know, that liver failed him. I got news for you. Your brain is just another organ in your body. It's just like your heart, your liver, your bladder. Hello? And I've pastored some folks that their brain, in fact, failed them. Oh, you don't have to say amen because people around you might think you know what I'm talking about. But I've, I've pastored people whose brain failed them. And I got news for you. If you can be saved with a heart failure, a liver failure, a bladder failure. Oh, you Pharisees, you don't have to clap. Go ahead and act like you got it all together. But when the rug is pulled out from under you. Hello? I'm here to tell you, he said, I'm going to take care of everything, all, all. I'm going to heal everything. And that also means if you've got emotional problems, if the enemy has attacked your mind, if the enemy's attacked your ability to think straight, he's going to heal all. Clap your hands and shout, thank you, Jesus. How about protection? The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and protect you. The Bible said he was wounded for our transgressions. Do you know what a transgression is? It's an outward breaking of the law. It's to lie, cheat, steal, commit adultery, do something that everybody knows about. It's out there. It's for everybody to see. That is a transgression. When you transgress the law of God, it's an outward transgression. He said he was wounded for our transgressions. You know what a wound is? It's an outward breaking of the flesh. You have something fall and cut your arm right there. That's a wound. It's got to be cleaned up. It's got to be dressed. It maybe have to be sewn up. It's got to be tended to. It's an outward breaking of the flesh. And he said, I was wounded. 
for your transgressions. I was broken outwardly for your outward sins. And then he went on and say, I was bruised for your iniquities. You know what an iniquity is? It's a sin of the heart. It's a sin on the inside. It's hatred. It's murder. It's having feelings that you shouldn't have. It's thinking things you shouldn't think that nobody knows. They can be standing right beside you and not know what's going on inside of you. And God said, don't worry. I'm wounded for the outward stuff, but I'm not going to overlook the inward stuff. I'm going to be bruised for your iniquity. He was wounded outwardly for our outward sin. He was bruised inwardly for our inward sin that nobody knows anything about. Here's what it is folks God said no matter what's going on in your life I got it covered I got it covered I got it covered everybody clap your hands to him he overcame death hell and the grave Jesus said in John 16 and 33 in this world you will have trouble That isn't where Jesus stopped talking. Boy, I'm sure glad he didn't just make a statement like, in this world, you're going to have trouble. And then it'll be done. Settled. Nothing you can do about it. You're going to have trouble. No. He said, but take heart. I've overcome the world. This world has no control over you. This world has no power over you. I'm going to say it again. I don't care what the Supreme Court does. I don't care what White House does. I don't care what the Senate does. I don't care what the Congress does. I don't care what the governor does. I don't care what the school board does. I'm telling you, you've got power over this world. He said, I have overcome the world. You can't stop them from sinning. But he's not going to let their sin upset your apple cart. And you shouldn't either. Hello? Everybody said amen. Amen. He said, I'm going to give you abundant life. John 10 and 10, I am come that they might have life and that more abundantly. He's not talking about when you get to heaven. He's talking about right here, right now. Abundant life. I saw a bumper sticker on a car that said a bad day golfing is better than a good day working. I got news for you. A bad day in church is better than the best day you ever had in the world living in sin. Clap your hands and say yes if that's your testimony. He said, I'm going to give you eternal life. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. We don't sing about it enough. I love the singing that we've heard the last few weeks around here. I love our praise team and our musicians. But them old timers used to sing about it and remind each other, this world's not my home. I'm just passing through. I got treasures laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Come on, somebody. We need to be reminded every now and then that this isn't the end. This isn't the end. There's going to be a trumpet sound one of these days. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up together to meet Him in the air. And there shall we ever be with the Lord. Things that accompany salvation. Benefits that go beyond death, burial, and resurrection. Clap your hands and say yes. When I was a boy, Brother Hugh Rose used to come to our church and district and he would sing an old song called The Love of God. How rich and pure. How marvelous. That song was written in 1917 by a guy named Frederick Lehman. He was a German. The song is based on a poem written by a Jewish man, Yitzhak Nehoria, if I'm saying it right. And it was written in 1100 A.D. Here's the words to it. I think they're so powerful. Could we with ink the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made? 
And every stock and tree on earth a quill. And every man a scribe by trade. To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. If you don't know it already, let me tell you today on this Easter Sunday, God loves you. And there is no greater love than what this day signifies. That a man that knew no sin became your sin. And that sin was nailed to an old rugged cross so you and I could be free. Could be free. Come on somebody. Isn't God good? Hasn't God been good? Would you stand to your feet, lift your hands, and start worshiping Him all over this building? This is Easter Sunday. This is Easter Sunday. There's nobody in here that don't have something to thank God for. Oh God, we love you. You may have the best mom in the world. You may have a very loving daddy. I assure you, you've got a pastor that loves you. And a whole pastoral team that loves you and are devoted to you. you got a church here that's going to love you, that does love you. But can I tell you, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. My mama sang it when I was a boy. No one ever was so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and sorrow from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. He loves you, folks. He loves you no matter what. Most of the folks that don't get right with God, it's because they can't forgive themselves. And I come against that today. I, I come against that today. Either this verse of Scripture is true, or it's not. And if it's not, then the whole book's not true. You can't believe one verse in that book if you can't believe all of them. Hello? And God said, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing can separate me. Preacher, you don't want to, it don't matter. If it comes under the category of nothing, nothing can separate me from the love of God. It's time for you to forgive yourself. It's time you to Allow yourself to be renewed and restored. It's time for you to repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name if you haven't already. And be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is the power of God unto salvation. This gospel is powerful. And I'm telling you it's 2,000 years old now. 2,000 years old now. And guess what? It's the only thing I know 2,000 years old still works still works still works reach out and take somebody by the hand we're going to pray for one another but before you pray eyes open look at them and say once you know I love you now look at them again and say and more important than that God loves you now would you start praying one for another all over this building. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord God, for what we feel in this house. I thank you, Lord, for the hunger that's in this house. I thank you, God, for every person that has gathered here today. I thank you, God, that you've met us here. I feel your presence and power in this house. I feel your love and your mercy and your grace at work in this house. Oh God, I pray right now against anything that would stop somebody from being what you want them to be, of having the relationship with you that you want them to have. I pray against it today. I pray against fear. I pray against self-doubt. I pray against self-hatred. I pray against self-loathing. I pray against anything that is emanated from self that stops any individual from being Lord God with you right with with you, in love with you. I pray for them today, Lord God. 
I pray, God, that you would do a work, do a miracle as you did in that first service. Seven people saw their need to be baptized on this Easter Sunday. Three were filled with the Holy Ghost and refilled on this Easter Sunday. Oh, God, I thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. I'd like all of our pastors to come, if you will, and line this altar area. Every pastor in the house, come and line the altar area. If you're here and you're one of our ministers, you come on too and help them today. Pastors and ministers, come and help. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If your husband's up here and the wife is in the audience, you come and help, please. Praise God. Praise God. What are you doing, preacher? I'm getting a good team up here. That if you'll step out of where you are, that's all you got to do, step out in the aisle. Once you step out in the aisle and just start walking, it's all over. God's going to bless you. God's going to touch you. God's going to fix things that you've not been able to fix. Are you hearing me? Things you've had no control over, he has total control over. 1,000% control over. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. We're waiting here with all of those that are come to help pray. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to come. We're going to pray first, but then I'm going to open this altar up for whosoever will to come. If you're standing by someone that you think they're probably wanting to go down and pray, but they may not go down by themselves, would you take them by the hand and say, come on, let's me and you go down together so you don't have to go by yourself. Let's, let's both go down and you have a little time of prayer here today. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to go with you. You don't have to go by yourself. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you for what I feel in this house. I thank you, Lord, for what your word promises. I thank you, God, that you keep every promise. I thank you, Lord God, that there's men and women here today that if they'll walk down that aisle, lift a hand and ask you for help, you're going to help them. You're not going to disappoint anybody. Nobody's going to leave here disappointed. God, you're going to help every single one that asks for it. You're going to minister to them if they want to repent. You're going to forgive them. If they want to be baptized, you're going to wash away their sins. And if they want to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, you're going to fill them to overflowing. That's going to happen here today because, God, your word is true. You don't lie. You never lie. All of your promises are yea and amen. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, God bless you. Come right on if you need prayer. These ministers are ready to pray for you. Come right on if you need prayer. There you go. Keep coming. Come right on if you need prayer. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Come on. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, God, we love you today. We love you today. Church, would you lift your hands over these at the altar? And would you pray for them? If there's somebody up here you know and you have a burden for, I want to invite you to step out of where you are and come and pray for them. Would you do that? Come on, would you do that? What a beautiful day, Easter Sunday. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful day to get things right with God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Brother Bob, would you help us pray? We got more people up here than we got ministers. Brother Torres, come help us pray. Brother David Ledbeater, come help us pray. We got a bunch of people up here that need a touch from God. Find somebody that don't have anybody with them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we got more coming. Keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. Zach, help us pray. Brother Rodney, help us pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Brother Corey, come up here and help us pray. Help us pray. Find somebody to pray with. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any of you ladies that can help us pray, we've got ladies up here that need prayer. Amy, right here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, right on the other side of Cecil. In the name of the Lord, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh God, we love you. God, we worship you. God, we adore you. Brother Mark, pray for this young man right here. Hallelujah, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, that's it. Find somebody to help pray. Find somebody you can help pray with. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, God, you're doing the work right now. God, you're doing the work right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sister Cunningham, I need you right over here, please. Right up here. Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. All the way around here, all the way around here. There you go. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in da 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 da, right there, right there with Brother Torres. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amaris, come right here and help Gammy. 